Over the past few months, a TikTok account of a deep fake Tom Cruise has been making the rounds on news channels, blogs, and YouTube videos. There's a lot to say about these short videos that have so far garnered over 2.5 million likes on TikTok. From the ridiculousness of the Tom Cruise-like antics, to the uncanny voice resemblance and mannerisms, to the very serious question of are we all doomed if deep fake technology is already this good? So today I want to take a brief look into this phenomenon, how machine learning has evolved over the years, the pros and cons of deep fakes and their various applications, and in what ways we're going to have to live with all of it. Although the word deepfakes has only been popularized in the past three years, the technology behind it has been decades in the making. We can pretty much trace it all back to Alan Turing, who is credited as being one of the greatest mathematical minds of the 20th century. He's the guy who cracked the infamous Enigma code of the Germans, shortening the length of World War II by two years. He then went on to devise the famous Turing test, whereby a human evaluator has to be tricked by a computer into thinking they're talking to another human being in order for the machine to be considered sentient. The foundation that Alan and Turing laid down was the fertile ground on which machine learning was able to flourish in the decades following his untimely death in 1954. In the 60s, advances were made in the field of artificial neural networks, which are essentially a set of processing layers that take input data and seek to identify an output goal through complex mathematical determination. During the 80s, people like Gerald Dijon, Tom Mitchell, and Thomas Ellman wrote research papers outlining the concept of explanation-based learning. This form of machine learning essentially tells a computer what the problem is, it states a number of known facts and rules that might guide the machine towards a solution, and using the information provided, the computer proceeds to find the most practical way to reach the desired goal. A simple application of this is in the way a computer learns to play chess. It first has to be taught the rules of the game, but then it will manage to adapt in any situation when facing a human opponent. This is exactly what happened in 1996, when the computer Deep Blue marked the first chess victory against world champion and grandmaster Gary Kasparov. In 2011, IBM's own computer system named Watson competed on the popular quiz show Jeopardy, winning the first place prize of $1 million. And in 2016, Google's AlphaGo computer won against Go champion Lee Sedol after beating him four out of five times, once again proving the superior speed and computing power of machines over the human brain. <laughs> So we see how computers got exponentially smarter over the years and how technology has quote unquote learned to detect patterns and make choices towards a set goal. But the first time this was applied to speech and human faces was 1997 with a paper titled Video Rewrite Driving Visual Speech with Audio. The authors originally intended to solve the annoying problem of inaccurate mouth movement in cinema, writing close-ups in dubbed movies are often disturbing due to the lack of lip sync. Video Rewrite is a system for automatically synthesizing faces with proper lip sync. And with the use of machine learning, the team behind Video Rewrite was able to create new frames and adjust mouth positions into a much more accurate and natural looking synchronization. Although relatively small in scope, this project inspired many others to follow. In 2016, the Technical University of Munich published a real-time face capture software called Face to Face, which drastically improved on the experiment. And the following year, the University of Washington created a framework for lip sync generation based on Barack Obama's appearance with impressive and scary results. But it was always a matter of time until this incredible technology would be used for less academic purposes. A Redditor by the name of Deepfakes started creating and uploading videos that combined porn star bodies and famous actresses' faces. A Vice article by Samantha Cole brought light on the situation with the title, AI assisted fake porn is here and we are all f***ed. Props for the wordplay there. The article pointed out that this is no longer rocket science. Technology had evolved so much that anybody with a consumer grade laptop was now able to synthesize images and put anyone's face on anything. This made for great memes and a lot of creative content came out as a result, but many people were concerned about it being used for spreading this information. More than once, deepfake videos made the news in cases of public confusion and concern in regards to upcoming elections. Around the same time, the term fake news was popularized when a group of Macedonian teenagers in the small town of Veles were revealed to be running over a hundred websites of contentious, misleading content being incentivized by ad revenue. This is where the lack of digital literacy in social media users, combined with powerful new technology, as well as a monetization incentive, created a trifecta of danger which to this day remains hard to combat. But although there's certainly an urgent need for informed conversation on the topic, I wouldn't say everything that's come out of it is bad. <laughs> 
If we go back to the fake Tom Cruise on TikTok, the project shouldn't, in my opinion, scare people off, but rather be taken as it was intended according to the creator Chris Ume, to raise awareness and educate people on what the technology can do, how to spot deep fakes, and why it's always important to think twice before believing everything you see on your phone. At the same time, I also think it's worth remembering that this information, or fake news, has existed long before computers were able to generate fake identities. For over a century and a half, photographs have been doctored to discuss display false realities. Airbrushing unwanted elements, excluding certain people, different photos have been combined to present a fabricated reality altogether. For example, in 1950, Maryland Senator Millard Tidings lost re-election because his political enemies circulated a composite photo of him speaking to a communist leader whom he had never even met. If we go even further back, famous paintings have long been lying to us. Napoleon, for instance, is depicted in his famous heroic pose crossing the Alps on a white noble steed, when in reality, reality, he much more likely traversed the difficult terrain on a mule, as depicted sometime later by a different artist. In the absence of historically accurate media, the glamorization of specific events have in most cases led to a distorted view of history. Whether done intentional or not, false information has been around for as long as humans have had the ability to storytell. At the core of the issue, is that any different from what we're seeing today? The VFX artist behind the Tom Cruise project also points out, we've developed such technology before, and society's conception of truth has has more or less survived. It's like Photoshop 20 years ago. People didn't know what photo editing was, and now they know. As deepfakes become more and more of a staple in TV and movies, people's expectations will change, as did for imagery in the age of Photoshop. The technology of machine learning that enables deepfakes has, in my opinion, just as many positive outcomes as it does negative ones. Research continues to be done on applications of machine learning specifically in the entertainment field. A team of students from the University of Tokyo is working on an application to turn video footage into anime backgrounds, and although the results aren't exactly top grade quality, yet, it makes you wonder how much easier this technology could make the work of animation studios. Japan famously has a serious problem with underpaid anime workers, so it's possible that computers could one day help alleviate some of that pressure. Deepfake technology could also be used in cinema. There's so many cases where big studios pay millions and millions of dollars to create some uncanny valley younger version of different actors, and it never really hits the mark. You can find a lot of videos on YouTube of people essentially fixing expensive CGI shots in blockbuster movies with nothing more than a laptop in their bedroom. When you put all of these elements together, everything seems to point towards the fact that regardless how you feel about deepfakes, the phenomenon is not going anywhere. Instead of fearmongering and ignorantly rejecting it, we have to get educated on how to recognize it and to always keep an open critical mind as to what type of content we're consuming. Because you can never be too sure who's actually behind the curtain. Let me know your thoughts down below. How do you feel about deepfakes? Does it scare you? Or do you see it as having potential in entertainment? I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again very soon.